اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده سبحانه وتعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يذلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ثم صلاه والسلام على البشير والنذير والسراج المنير الطهر الطاهر العلم الظاهر المنصور المؤيد المصطفى الامجد ابي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى اله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما باقية الله في الأرضين ما مصاحب العسر والزمان روح وأرواح العالمين لتراب مقدمهم الفدا يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظروا نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون Respected elders, brothers, sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us the tawfiq, the opportunity to be in the masjid on this auspicious day of Friday. And we send salutations and peace to the last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. and to his oppressed family and that we are in the month of Muharram in the month that is at the beginning of the Islamic calendar under normal circumstances when the year starts in the Gregorian calendar when the year starts we have New Year and the people are celebrating But in the Islamic calendar, when we have Muharram in the beginning of the New Year, we are not celebrating. We are mourning about the genocide that took place, perpetrated against the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu and Muharram marks the brutal killing of Imam Al-Hussein Sallallahu Alaihi on the plains of Karbala, together with his family, companions, and the rest of the family of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is a crime that has been perpetrated by the Ummah that, cre- that claim to believe in Islam, that claim to believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that claim to be followers of Muhammad, but they turn their swords against the grandson of their own Prophet, and they slaughter them one by one and their family. This is a time when we blame those 30,000 that participated in the crime and their Amir Yazid Lanatullah Alayhi, we also have to condemn the Ummah. The Ummah that was present. Islam has reached a level where it was thousands and thousands of regions. People who claim to believe in Allah. But when Abba Abdullah Hussein was surrounded, he sent letters to all cities of looking for, for help. Hal min nasirin yansurna. Is there anyone to help us? Is there anyone who believes in Allah to come to our rescue? But all Ummah was quiet or scared of that which the consequences of supporting the, met- the grandson of messenger of Islam. The Ummah had lacked in the concept of fear of Allah. The Ummah had become so shameless that when it comes to the love of Ahl al-Bayt, They say they believe Ahl al-Bayt, but only in their heart, but their souls were not ready to protect them. This is a weakness from the Ummah that was present today, that time. And still today we have an Ummah that wants to play down this killing. Today's discussion, inshallah, <coughs> I quoted the verse in the Quran. that say, all oh, you who believe, Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ittaqullah, be conscient of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, waltanduru nafsun 
And every person must prepare or must think of what's going to happen tomorrow. In the short time I have today, I want to discuss the concept of taqwa. It's taqwa. When the Quran says we must fear Allah, what does Allah mean? Sometimes we have wrong conceptions about taqwa. And that which probably we don't have full understanding. Because every time when, we, when they translate the word ittaqullah, they say we must fear Allah. This is wrong. Allah is not to be feared. Allah is not a lion we need to fear. Allah is not someone we need to fear. Allah is someone we need to love. When our Mufasirin explain, yes, when you love somebody, you have some kind of akhlaq in front of him, and that may be interpreted as fear, but it's not fear, it's respect. But Mufasirin, when they explain taqwa, they say it comes from the word root, called al-wikaya, which means protection, immunity. Taqwa means to gain immunity, to gain protection, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like considering a human body. We have our immune system. We have our antibodies. We have the fighter cells. We have the recognizing cells. In our body, our immune system is organized that there are cells that are intelligent in the body. They identify foreign, strange elements in the body. It's a disease, it's a bacteria, it's something. Those cells, they are, they are aware. They come and check the whole body every now and then. When they meet something strange, then they notify the migration. The migration will say, oh, there is a foreign guy in the body. They come and surround it. It's your inflammation, it's your... When you start, maybe something hits you and you start swallowing, it's police in your body stopping someone strange from going, proceeding to your heart or to somewhere else. So it's called immune system. Now, immune system, a human being was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they explain about taqwa, taqwa in a spiritual life, this is, we are talking about immune system in a physical life. But we also have a spiritual life. In a spiritual life also we have bacteria that cause disease. We have corona, covid, we have all these bacteria that exist in our physical life, also in our spiritual life, they are those elements that cause diseases of the soul. Quran says, Fi qulubihim maragun, fazadahumullahu maragun. Quran discusses about munafikun and, not, and evil doers. He say in the heart there is a disease. It does not mean the disease, a physical disease, like myocardial infarction or any inflammation of the heart cells, no. In their spiritual life, in their heart, in their soul, there is a disease. Therefore, taqwa is immune system in the spiritual life. In our spiritual life, we need also our taqwa, our immune system. In our physical life, sometimes we have to take zinc, vitamin C. You remember during the time of COVID, what we were taking to boost our immune system. So something that protects a human being spiritually from spiritual diseases. Spiritual diseases include crime, include uh, rape, include all these people that the society is struggling from. They are a result of spiritual diseases. It's because the society doesn't have immune system. If you look at the level of crimes in South Africa, we are at the level of immunodeficient syndrome. We have reached the level of AIDS. The level of AIDS is the level at which all your immune system of your body is destroyed by a virus. Even as light as infect, infection can kill you. You are if Even a cold flu, you can't survive it. If all your body cells, immune system cells are destroyed, now you need to, disease, you need to take antiretroviral, now you need to survive on the pills every day because you don't have protection. So that level, when you reach it, it means you are suffering from immunodeficiency syndrome in a physical life. In a spiritual life, when crime is high, when society is 
so much involved in crime. The one you don't know is that if you leave your home, you go get back home safely. Our society now is sick of immunodeficiency in a spiritual life, in a Ruhani life. We are struggling from. We have lost protection. We don't have protection against the crime, the sin, and therefore we have lost taqwa. Taqwa in Islam is something that prevents you, defend you from a, from contracting this spiritual disease. And this, when you say it taqwa, in other words, get your protection from spiritual disease from who? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lean on Allah to give you spiritual protection. Ittaqullah, in other words, it means we care. We need to get to boost our immune system. In the very same soul, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us how to gain taqwa. Ittaqullah, wal tanzuru nafsu ma kaddamati lihad. Let everyone think of what's going to happen tomorrow. For Fasirin they say, Allah always says taqullah, but He's giving us a way how to get your taqwa, your wikaya, your protection. One of the ways to get your taqwa, your protection, is to think before you act. Is to think of ghayatul amal. What is the end of my action? What's going to happen to me tomorrow? What I'm going to do now? Is it going to give me freedom tomorrow? Is it going to give me good life tomorrow? Before you involve yourself in any activity, Allah says, nafsun ma lihad. Let the soul think of what is, what are you sending forward for you tomorrow? Might be tomorrow in the year after and tomorrow in this world. You are excellent. Are they going to put you in a better position tomorrow or in a way for you say, what taqullah? Then you seek protection from Allah and you think twice before you act. Quran gives a number of advice on how to get to this level of taqwa. But if you look at the situation we are living currently, we don't have protection. We have, if you look at our government, have you listened to our budget speech? The budget speech when now the Minister of Finance comes and gives allocation of funds. You know the biggest budget in every country is going to security. The biggest allocation of funds is not going to education. Education are not getting enough money. The biggest allocation of funds is going to police and the army. Why? Because crime has come so hard that we are spending almost everything that we are earning to combat this spiritual disease, this rape. <coughs> it's murder, it's stealing, it's all of these, con- it's the, all of these crimes are happening because if you look at in our society, a lot of people are eating from crime. What is the job of our lawyers? Our lawyers they are eating from crime. Everyone commit crime, our lawyers are getting paid. <laughs> they have to take to pay people. <laughs> our judges are getting paid because of crime. Remove judges, correctional service officers, what are they doing? They are benefiting from crime. Police is getting paid from crime. Army is getting So, literally, crime has become a, a big industry that everyone is eating from. There are those who are eating halal from crime. There are those who are eating. It's not only the criminal who is benefiting from crime, even the lawyers are benefiting, giving salawat our lawyers and stuff. I see some lawyers are looking at me. But this is a situation where this is what is happening. So crime is happening as a result of immunodeficiency. Our society has lost protection. Protection in social diseases. Social diseases are diseases of the mind. They are spiritual diseases. And Quran when is advising the Quran teaches people to acquire the spiritual wikaya, taqwa. Taqwa is a protection against the, the social needs. If our government understood this concept, that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can prevent men from committing crime, they will invest in, in the masajid, they will invest in, in, in churches. But they, in their budget, they don't have a budget for spiritual leaders. They have a big budget for traditional leaders. You know how many kings, guru kings are getting money every month? Costa people, Zulu people, they have no, there's no fund for Mulanas, there's no fund for 
pastors from the government, because the government doesn't understand the, 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 the root cause of the crime. Donald Trump, when he was announcing his plan to fill America using a big wall around them, America, to prevent foreigners to come to America, Mexicans, they told him, oh, we don't mind. You can build a tall wall building as long as the guard has the key, will you give him, the money will open. The problem is not the wall, the problem is our guard. Today we cry, we, we cry in South Africa, now it's for us, everyone entered South Africa anyhow. And our ministers are every time changing the guard to guard. Habibi, you are, you, are, you are enforcing the wrong department. You should be enforcing these officers to go to, go to church. One of the conditions I can suggest before you, in, you, before you employ someone in the police force, you must take his record. Did he go to Masjid? Did he go to Madrasa? Did he attend church? On Sunday, what his kind of personality is, then in he has taqwa, he has wikaya. You see Allah, when he guards the borders of his country, he's standing there, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching him. And that person is not bribable. There are those who are joining the army in the Mukawama, in Hezbollah, in movement of... They are not bribable. You can't bribe, an, you can't bribe a Hezbollah soldier. He went there to give his life for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have seen Iranian youth when they stay in front of ISIS. They have no fear, they have no... You can't buy those youth who have trained spiritually and they join the forces to defend Allah and to defend the borders of their country and security of their people. These people are not bribable. On our streets, 50 rand is enough for you to get you anywhere. Our security people are taking 50 rand, our police. Everyone is taking bribes, even our government officials. So this is showing the, the whole society has lost the wikai, there's no taqwa, there's no one who is watching us. As long as the police doesn't see me, I can do it. So this is one of the effects of lacking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the lives of human beings. You can't control a society where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is removed completely from their lives. Please read Salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. When we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we get a lot of benefits, brothers. And every person must engage himself in conscientizing his mind and his soul with the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he can become a good person, a muhsin in the hadith we read one day Ibrahim came in the form of a human being he was asking the messenger of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is asking him a number of questions and one of the questions he asked him say akhbirni anil ihsan tell me about kindness, good how do I attain kindness, how do I attain being a good person Rasulullah told him, Al-Ihsan, an ta'abud Allah ka'annaka tara' wa illam takun tara' fa'innahu yara'ak. You can achieve this by bringing consciousness of Allah in your mind. You worship Him as if He's there, as if Allah is there. You can see Him, you visualize Allah's presence in your life. Even if you don't see Him, Allah sees you. If you have that visualization and concept, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going you are going to become a good person. So this is one of, this is one of the concepts of if you benefit, if you internalize the presence of Allah in your life, then you are going to become a good person, inshallah. This is one of how you can become a good person. Another importance of taqwa, we read in a Surah Al-A'raf, verse 67, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْكُرَّ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا لَهُمْ أَبْوَابَ السَّمَاوَاتِ If the people of the town believed in Allah and developed all of them, أهل الكرة, we're not meaning when one person talks to Allah, if everyone in the city, آمَنُوا وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ and every member of the community believed and they develop that we kaya we discuss, that presence of Allah in their mind, la fatahna lahum abwabas, we were going to open all the blessings from the sky and from the earth. This is understandable from the discussion we had earlier. 
Imagine if everyone in this country was not corrupt. Imagine if every cent allocated to municipality was going for services. And everyone fear Allah not giving tender to their brothers and to their comrades. This city was going to be flowing with rivers in it. The money is so enough. There was not going to be a hungry person in South Africa. It can have so much reach. Where the president is sleeping on the cash, on the mattress. <laughs> president has so much money in dollars that he's sleeping. He has in the mattress and everyone, but his neighbors don't have food. And he comes and he, cre- he cries when the kids die from the tavern. He comes and cries crocodile tears. The funds can be used. Why he's sleeping on the funds? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْكُرَّ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ If they understood the meaning of taqwa and wikaya, if everyone developed in that country, they were going to be flowing of blessing from the sky and from the earth. The agricultural department will work. The vegetation will be so green, so much corruption in agriculture. Every department is, is corrupt. So, this is the meaning of Allah. If the country has the fear of Allah, you will see them even in, on, in advancing on their field, in their development, in their society, they will be advancing. But without the fear of Allah, a human being doesn't get blessed. On a personal level, when you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah Al-Talaq, verse number 5, you must read it properly. Verse number 5 of Surah Al-Talaq, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ Whoever fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever develop that kindness of conscience of Allah, يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Allah will make way out of his situation. If you fear Allah, in every situation you find yourself, Allah will take you out. Last night in our discussion, we discussed about the condition of Nabi Yunus, salamullahi alayhi. For those who are not in the Muslims, Nabi Yunus, salamullahi alayhi, found himself in the sea, swallowed by the fish, was unknown if Zahaba Muhaziban is in it. Fadanna Allah Nakdira Ali Fanada Fi Zuluman Allah ilaha illa an Subhanaka inni kuntu mina zalimin. He was in the deep sea dark, you know the darkness of the sea. When you are thrown by the fish and the fish goes and relax on the sea, on the sand. But he didn't he didn't he didn't lose hope. He raised his hand and he said, Subhanaka inni kuntu min fastajabna Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a place that fish swallowed him so fast that that guy found himself on the other side of the sea. Subhanallah. Allah saved him from that situation because of taqwa of Allah. Quran in other verse it says, فَلَوْلَا إِنْ كَانَ مِنَ فَلَوْلَا إِنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ In the Prophet Safad. If Nabi Yunus Jonah was not among those who do tasbih. If he didn't do that tasbih, Subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalim, la labisa fi batnihi hatta atahu al-yaqeel. He was going to stay in the stomach of the fish until the day of Qiyamah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of Wikaya, then Allah saved him from that condition, inshaAllah. Time does not allow for us to come to finish, but inshaAllah we'll continue our discussion. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to give us the taqwa, inshallah, and I advise you to fear Allah and to develop the conscience of Allah and advise myself, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa al-Asr. Inna al-Insan ala fi husr. Ila al-Ladhina amanu wa amilu al-Salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-Haq. Wa tawasaw bil-Sad. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad.